out that video I put out a few weeks back, my most anticipated films of the year. This one is top of that list, Late Night with the Devil. Late Night with the Devil, I've been looking forward to this for a few months now. This movie seems almost tailor-made to my tastes and my interests. So, you've been here before on this channel. You know the drill, I do not do spoiler-free reviews. Um, so, if you're somebody that is planning on seeing the movie, you haven't seen it yet, uh, do not watch this video, but I will tell you, if you're just asking for an overall opinion, go see it, don't go see it. It is one's actually tricky. I really enjoyed this movie quite a bit. But I don't think this movie is for everybody. If you're a fan of the 70s and 80s horror films, think The Exorcist. This movie actually gave me big Exorcist vibes. Poltergeist is another, another good one here, I think. If you're fans, if you're a fan of that type of movie, that 70s, 80s analog horror, because this has a lot of practical effects, a lot of cheesy practical effects. If you're a fan like I am, or I, I, have, a, I have a deeply ingrained love of late night television, like late night talk shows, think Johnny Carson, Conan O'Brien, Jay Leno, David Letterman. I think you'll like this movie. If you like Paranormal Activity, if you like The Conjuring, if you like, you know, if that's the type of horror you like more, even if you like things like Saw or like that more kind of visceral, gritty horror, I would not recommend this movie for you. Because in many ways, this doesn't even feel like an out and out horror movie a lot of the time. But that's, yeah, I can't, I can't recommend this movie to everybody. I absolutely loved the movie. But I think this is not going to be a crowd pleaser for general audiences. And that's about all I can tell you on that, uh, in that regard. But from this point forward in the review, the way I talk about these movies, it's just off the top of my head, stream of consciousness, so I can't do a spoiler-free review. So if you don't want spoilers, I would say click away from this video now. So, Late Night with the Devil. Like I said, this has been my most anticipated film of the year. Um, David Dust Machine. I still don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. Um, I've always loved him as an actor. And seeing him leading in the, being the leading man in this movie. I was like, okay, cool, this guy's, you know, this, this could be a, a good vehicle for him to, like, maybe start getting more leading roles in Hollywood. So that was really cool. Um, I know there was a little bit of, um, controversy around this film because of some AI images used in the in-between title cards. Honestly, the only one that really stood out to me negatively was the skeleton one because you could see the irregularities in the fingers, but I don't really want to talk about that too much. I, um, I loved this movie. Again, I talked about earlier the analog horror reminded me of things like The Exorcist, one of the best horror movies of all time, especially some of the effects um, with uh, Lily. I believe, right, Lily was her name because June, yeah, June and Lily. June is the doctor. Um, some of the way she moved and, like, the, the voice tricks are very similar to the ones with Reagan that Reagan used in The Exorcist. Uh, and the way her face changed, like, the practical makeup effects. Now, what I thought was interesting is this movie is called Late Night with the Devil. And, um, the, the cult 
present in this movie, or excuse me, the book is called Conversations with the Devil, right? That the, 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 the whole plot um, centers around. But um, the cult worship to Praxis, which that's like you're going down into Gnosticism, uh, the Greek magical papyri, right? Um, you know, for me, I'm someone who, like, I love studying occult stuff, you know, but, like, people don't even agree if Abraxas was a demon, like, among theologians, like, Epiphanius thought that Abraxas was, uh, a builder, uh, like, the power above all first principle, things like that, uh, Jerome, um, referred to Abraxas as the greatest god, the highest god. Uh, then obviously, you know, the Catholic Church says that Abraxas is a demon, uh, the, but, yeah, so it's, even if you take the, the Catholic Church calling Abraxas a demon, that's still not the devil. And then the, the caretaker, June, insists even further that, um, well, she doesn't even think it's a Praxis um, inhabiting Lily's body. She thinks it's a lesser demon. But anyways, that's all very, um, you know, whatever. It's all very heady and not in, not consequential to the story at all. Um, but the character of Jack Delroy, played by David Dash Melsine again, uh, I'm not going to get that pronunciation right. I love the character of Jack Delroy. As somebody who grew up watching late night television, I have this weird fascination with late night talk shows. Um, now, Johnny Carson was a little bit before my time, but I love the jokes, the allusions to Johnny Carson. And what's funny is I watch this in Australia, and I don't really think that they have that same culture of late night talk shows here like we do in the states so he comes out uh, towards the beginning of the film after we cut away from the the narrative documentary intro portion right and he starts doing a little late night talk show monologue and like me personally I'm loving it cause I'm like oh you know this reminds me of what I love like the Dick Cavett show kind of you know, very reminiscent of the Dick Cavett show the cheesy monologue jokes, you have the sidekick who's kind of the butt of the joke, you have the band there, and I'm like immediately bought in, like I love this, I love this, you know, all this, but I'm sitting there wondering how well that's working with the Australian audience, who maybe they don't have that cultural frame of reference that I grew up with, right, because I would go to bed and we only had basic cable, so I would put on, um, I put on the Jay Leno show, Conan O'Brien, David Letterman, I'd fall asleep to that stuff. Um, now, I love that, I, I did like the intro portion with the narrator. Um, I thought that was an interesting way to frame the film, like a found footage film almost. But I love that it also put a time restraint on the film. And this is a pretty short movie. It comes in just over 90 minutes. And I think that's including opening and closing credits. And it must be said, I counted six different production company logos at the start of this film. I started laughing. I was sitting in my seat going like, one. And then I saw a plane. I'm like, there's two. Like, I had to start counting them. There were so many. Um... And the, the movie was a little bit different than I was expecting. It took some turns that I, based on the trailer, was not anticipating. Um, the skeptic character that they brought in, at times he was a little bit hit or miss for me. Very James Randy, right? And the little hypnotism section he did was a little bit iffy on that part, not gonna lie, I was like, oh, are you really gonna say that, 
convince this whole crowd that they saw like worms and stuff like that's kind of stretching the suspension of disbelief if you're saying he's just a regular hypnotist who's doing something like that right but I loved the character of Jack and how you set up his desperation and what I thought was interesting was the reference to the Bohemian Grove and they like the obviously they called it the Grove and said the Bohemian Grove but they had the statue of Moloch there the great owl they had they referenced the fact that presidents had been to the Bohemian Grove so they didn't hold back on that aspect of it that was interesting I'm like okay that's they're bringing that angle into things here uh, which I thought was an interesting call and his wife getting lung cancer, which you're kind of... I like that this movie leaves you to make a lot of inferences for yourself. Like, it doesn't outright tell you that she was given lung cancer in exchange for Jack's success. But it's very, very easy for you to infer that for yourself. In a note on the wife, I think she actually... This is my theory. I think she was actually the one responsible for everything that happened. I think she wanted revenge on Jack. I do think that the demon was in the girl Lily. I think that that part is real, the demon being in her. But I think that June gets the demon into her by the end. And I think it's the wife that is that causes everything to happen. Because um, the the medium that comes on first, uh, Christo, when he has that moment and he calls out the name Minnie, which ends up being the wife of Jack, like their nickname, he throws up the black substance, which is almost like tar, right? His wife died of lung cancer, tar smoking and then when you're also when they are showing back the the video of the possession of lily and then of course you see his wife with her hand on his shoulder right so she's there but beyond that there are points in the film where you see the wife but they don't draw attention to it like they did in that moment there's a few times where you see her ghost in reflections during the uh, commercial break segments and things like that. So she's kind of always present on the set as a ghost. And you have to remember they kind of intro it at the beginning. It is the last night for Spirits with Unfinished Business. She has unfinished business with Jack. She wants revenge for him basically sacrificing her for his success and also having an affair with June and all this stuff so I don't, I don't think the movie necessarily confirms that or not but I think that the wife's ghost is responsible for a lot of what happens hold on I've just gotten like four texts I seem to make sure it's it's literally nothing serious. Okay. Um, yeah, that's just my, that's my, um, my read on it. That at the end, Lily has the demon under control until the wife makes it come out. And, uh, Mr. Rickles, she calls it, um, I loved the period accurate look um, when you're in the TV segments um, where it's your letterbox 16 by 9 not 16 by 9 um, is it 4 by 8 I can't think right now but your, your box you know old school look but even beyond that it's like it has that soft sort of focus 
which is the kind of lenses I use here. It's like, even though I'm in focus here, I like having this soft focus look on me. That's all my lenses I get. I get vintage uh, soft focus lenses, and I throw a mist filter on it. Just to keep everything looking soft, so even things that are in focus are soft. This movie did that. But then with this sort of, like, VHS filter over the top. I don't know if that was all done in post or if they used vintage gear. And I loved that your um, in-between segments were in black and white up until the very end. And I love, you know, part of me was like, Jack, I think I think in my, I predicted this video a little bit or this movie a little bit. I said that I thought Jack summoned the devil and that he was going to sacrifice the audience for success. That was kind of my thinking. But as you see those between the those commercial break segments, behind the scenes segments, you realize Jack isn't really in control of what's happening, even though I do think he maybe sold his soul or whatever, as it's implied. I don't think he perhaps necessarily believes in it. I definitely don't think that he, he wanted to, I think he thought that it was kind of fake to a degree, maybe not completely fake, but he thought it was going to be okay, and I don't think he intended to sacrifice the audience or anything like I originally uh, thought might be the plot of this movie. My only real issue with the movie is the ending. Like, I, I loved you know, the first 75, 80 minutes of this thing. Um, but I felt like they didn't really know how to end it, right? You have everybody getting wiped out by the negative presence. Oh, I loved it. He was, like, trying to give her the check at the very end. But then, like, it... it cuts and he had this weird like Jack comes back out starts the show but everything's a little bit off I think into this weird like nightmare sort of hellscape version of different events in Jack's life and this is this cause during the, the show segments right it was your old school letterboxed look but then on your commercial break segments, you were back to your, you know, 16 by 9 full frame. But it was in black and white, right? Because it was kind of like trying to... whatever. But here, we're full frame and in color. And it was like this weird, like, dream sequence thing, whatever. You see him talking to his wife. And hold on, there's a cop car, I'm gonna pause. Sorry, I just, there was a police car going by. Um, but yeah, this, he's with his wife in the hospital, and she's like confronting about stuff, and the ritual dagger is there. The wife is asking him to like me, oh please put me out of my misery, etc, etc. And he stabs his wife, but then we come back to the real world. It's revealed that he has actually stabbed Lily. And if we zoom out, Jack is there holding Lily's dead body. We're zooming out as everyone's dead around him. The audience is dead. We hear cop cars in the distance roll credits. It felt like a weak ending to me. I was like, ah, they didn't know how to put this thing across the finish line, but I don't let that take away from a very enjoyable early earlier part of the movie. Um, yeah, overall, you know, the, like I said, this was my most anticipated film of the year. I think it fell just a bit short of where I hoped it would be at. I was kind of hoping for an 8 or 9 out of 10 here. I think ultimately I would give this a 7 out of 10. I think I'd go a 7 out of 10. And that's if you're like me. Like I said, in many ways, this movie felt day 
tailor-made for me um, references to many things that I like uh, in a time period I like set on the set of a type of show that I like you know there's a list of movies like boom 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 checking all my boxes and for me it's a 7 out of 10 that's why I said this movie is not for everybody um, if you're not interested in these types of horror films, if you're not interested in late night television, if you couldn't care less about the 70s, this might be like a 4 or a 5 out of 10 for you. Um, yeah. So that is that late night with the devil. Now, just to give you guys a peek behind the curtain here, if you're still here at the end of this video, um, I've been watching the Fallout TV series. I have finished the first two episodes. I'm hoping to finish the series and have a review of Fallout up by Tuesday. This is my little post-it note video schedule. So, I'm hoping to have that up uh, by Tuesday. So, like, two reviews of movie TV in one week. I know it's a little bit, but, um, yes. So if you saw the movie, let me know in the comments down below. If you liked it, you disliked it, anywhere in between, I'd love to hear your comments on the film. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. And until next time, guys.